Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies with a uh, Redemption Rye. Redemption Rye. We're going to test it! 95.5 Indiana style. Ten-year barrel strength. Woohoo! I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Nine five five. You're like, huh? What? Nine five five. In the ass time. All right, uh, Super God, Scouch Out, Whiskey, Santa Claus, whatever we're you said gonna. Scouch Out. Scott, Super Scotch God, shout out. Right. Uh, John McKinney. Johnny. Right? I'm gonna call him Johnny. So the ten year redemption barrel strength rye. Mm, today's like Christmas, but better. So Fifty eight point one percent ABV. So this is ninety five. Uh, rye or five percent barley malt, two seventy four, two seventy five, and uh, it says flat out yeah. on there. The hole in the bottle is like the hat, <laughs> your army hat you still wear on your head. It's too small. <laughs> we got big bottle, big white, and then it's this big. Or the the glass is so thick there's just a little tiny hole in there to pour the whiskey out. Mm. Of. I, I, you, and you're slurping it. I got a pre-taste. I can't put that on a ploop. I like it. Synthetic Actually, the cork, cork is good, though. No, yeah. it's wood. Is it's it wood? Cork. Oh, it's cork. But I it's like, like it. enlarged at the base of it, so it actually has to, takes a little pressure to get it in there. Wow. It's like an arthritic knuckle. <laughs> it does say on the bottle, yeah. distilled in Indiana. I like it. It's almost got like a giant hip flask feel, but it's giant. Ooh. Giant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sweet rye notes. You know I love the 95.5 from Indiana. That's all I'm saying. It's rye bread and orange zest. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Zest, zest, and more zest. Sweet orange zest. Orange Ooh. juice. Oh, just did it. Lost the nose hair. Went too deep. Wow. So now you got to, you sampled this earlier. I have mm. not had this. I did. I did. Well, yeah, I did. I, I sampled it. Pre-prohibition. It says on the cap, whiskey revival. Nice nose. I really like the nose. Nice color to it. Boy, it's got just a nice rye nose. Mm. Mm. Rye explosion from the first taste. Um, get a little bit of that uh, root beer barrel flavor that's in there along with that sparky peppery rye mm. 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 you get the root bear <laughs> yeah i know mm. it's got a little punch to it mm. Mm. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> that i mean it tastes like a, a two-year-old rye yeah it, oh, i haven't had a, a rye 10 years old that tastes that sparky mm-hmm Mm. All right, I'm going to say Very something. Interesting. Well, I'll wait until we're done, and then I'll say something. Okay. I'll wait, just remind you're me. You're going to wait say. until we're done, and well, then I'm gonna you're going to wait until we're something. done with just this, because I'm going to step away to a different bottle, but I don't want to do it while we're mid-tasting. The James Pepper? No. That's what it reminds me of, the James Pepper barrel strength. I'm not disagreeing with you, but no. Mmm. I've had a little water. I got I don't know. Orange zest. Yeah. Rye notes. Caramel, cinnamon, nutmeg. Hmm. I did not get the nutmeg. I still pick up a little bit of that root beer barrel. A little candy, you know, when you first put it in. And you get a little bit of that root beer, but it's almost like a little bit of a, it's probably a burnt caramel root beer flavor. I like it. The, the hard candy root yeah. beer? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Mm. I haven't been going to my rise as much lately. <laughs> you know what? I hadn't either, and then I started pulling out my number one go-to, Pikesville. Mm -hmm. Still dig it. But it was funny because early on I was scotch, still probably lean scotch. Then it was rye over bourbon. And when I liked bourbon, it was the high rye bourbon. And it was, give me rye, give me rye, give me more rye, rye. And then, 
quite honestly, with the ECBP, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, and the regular Elijah Craig, it kind of ushered me into bourbons again. And I, I hit the bourbons frequently. And I touch the rise only when I want something that's going to jump up and slap me in the face. Rye gets your attention. This will do that. Yes. That's, it's kind of confusing me because it tastes like a young rye. It does not taste like a 10-year-old rye. 10-year-old, mm -hmm. to me, the more aged ryes pick up more bourbon notes because they're sitting in the wood that much okay. longer. Yeah. Uh, you think of the Pikesville, Michter's mm -hmm. Barrel Proof. Yeah. Um, those almost... Pick up more of the cinnamon, right. the caramel, the notes, the rye notes. You know start what it is, to, So they start to to die down. Right, this is ninety five percent rye with five percent malted barley. That, barley malt. Well, that's true. Well, no, because of Mick, Michter's rye. I don't know what the mash bill is on that. Um, Pikesville. I, w I wasn't thinking of bourbons with a high rye content, but yeah, that's MG true. This is ninety five percent rye, rye. And, and this is MGP's famous ninety five five. Now, it's very know, good. I mean, aging at 10 years is something special. There's no way I would have pinned this as a 10-year-old mm -hmm. rye is all. It tastes I'm young. It tastes fiery. It tastes sparky. Yeah, I'm with you there. It hides at 10 years. I mean, you could if you would have poured this to me blind and asked me to name it, I would have never said 10. It, uh, it doesn't have I would have said smoothness. I would have said James Pepper barrel strength, which okay, is like two, a two and a half year yeah, old ride. Two to four. Yeah, I would have pegged it between two to four. However, where's the where's the 10 years of the uh, aged in the oak? Where's that at? Right. Because yeah, I'm not getting a lot of oak flavors. Mm -mm. Good call. Hmm. I'll give you that. So... All right, I'll still hold. I'm still holding on on the other. No go. I think well, uh, that's about it. We'll I did add. Let price. me add another splash of water. That's what I was going to look yeah, up while you were talking. You. All right. Well, I'll talk while you're adding splash water. So I added one. I'm going to add another just to when, see. When and I can't. You'll you'll know the name off the top of your head, and I can't find it. When MGP put out their own rye, and I can't remember. Pottsville Union. No. Wasn't yeah. called Pottsville. Union. Rossville. Union. Rossville, yeah. <laughs> oh, Pottsville. You been to Colorado? What you been doing? Pottsville. <laughs> Sorry, thought you said Pottsville. I was like, that ain't the name of it. Rossville Union. Rossville Union. All right. What I expected from MGP when they did their own rye release was actually something like this. I thought they would definitely feature their ninety-five-five. Now I can see why they did. Uh, you know, they, they wanted to go another direction, but I expected to me, the 95, five that comes out of Indiana is some of the best rye I've had. Yeah. High and West used it or uses lots, it. Shoot, there's whatever, a lot, a lot of, of lots. Yeah. I don't even, I, you can't even name, you know, they just say Indiana. Yeah. So I expected something like, like the premium of the premium of the 95, five. Maybe this is it because Rossville um, had a whole different softer caramelization than a peppery rye. That's all I wanted to say. So it's not really a comparison. This is just more of what I what I thought Rossville would be. That's probably. You know. I think the the nose got better with water and it became more more aromatic. Mm. Uh, jumping the, out of the glass a little bit more, but it's still those classic rye notes. Yeah. I mean, it's the rye dough, the raising rye bread, mm -hmm. and it's those, the nose, it's rye noses, uh, when they really exude that rye loaf, that rye dough, I love them. It's like walking into a Panera when they're baking in the morning. Near a pirate ship. <laughs> Just kidding. I got salted pretzel, like the fresh baked oh, pretzels. Oh, the doughy pretzels. Yeah. 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 Um, Auntie Ann's yep. or whatever it is. I don't know about Ann Ann. I got an Ann named Ann Ann. Annie, Annie, what is it? Annie, I think it's Annie Ann. Annie, you got your gun? I don't know. Hmm. But I, uh, I, I can see that. It's, it's a, well, okay, score it. 
I'm going now. I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed. I expected more ten year richness. Okay, it's a great rye, yep. great rye notes. Eighty nine, beautiful. I was going to say eighty nine, maybe a ninety, somewhere in there. It, it's a good rye. Now it's a hundred. It's a hundred dollars. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. That's surprising. I didn't if I bought that. it for that, I wouldn't buy it again. I don't think. <sighs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah, hundred dollars. Um, so definitely with the ten years, that's the only thing I'm saying is with the ten years, I thought the same thing that it would have a little bit more of an oak influence mm -hmm. is what I thought, and I thought even at a proof like this or a strong rye that it would have some other subtle, maybe even some not that they're not there, but caramel bourbonish notes. You're right. It comes in two to four years as a rye for me, and I don't know if I pick up that ten years of. Mm -hmm. Cast maturation. Yeah, right. I don't, I'm not sure I get that. And uh, that's the only thing. And I can see why totally, if, you know, it's spent 10 years in a cask. That's money. It's money right in a barrel. But it just doesn't come off with that extra little finish. Phenomenal, though. Like yeah, it. still, yeah, still. 89, like I said, 89 ride. is a good score for me. If it was it. $50 to $60, a much better buy. But yeah, great palette on it, great rye notes. It's got a little leather cord on it. It's nice. <laughs> and I said, was there something on it? There wasn't. I wasn't sure if it came off in the packaging or what. Might have. Maybe something came off because I feel like there was something. Now, there. I did they have? I think they have a ten-year bourbon barrel strength out as well. I don't think there's just the rye. Got it. Um, a mash of ninety-five percent rye and five percent barley malt. Batch number 002, bottle number 482, 116.2 proof. So we have a traveling dummy, and I love this traveling dummy. Let me go look. Matthew Gardner sent us. The, they are in the Rome. photo. Him and his wife. Right. The one with the picture. But the first email, um, I have a picture of my wife, Dee Dee, holding one of your coins in front of the Roman Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We took it in November. The coin made the trip with us from Utah. Awesome. Uh, and he said, how do I get the picture to you? And I said, send it to us at scotchtestdummies mm -hmm. at gmail.com. So then he sent the picture, and there's his wife, Dee Dee. And the Coliseum. Uh, at the Coliseum, and I'm sure she's wondering, what are you having me do here? <laughs> yeah, why am I holding this coin in front of this ancient building? <laughs> he's why like, are you know, making honey. me do this? Just do it, honey. Yeah, he's Just like, swear. you're going to be on YouTube. Hundreds of people will see Hundreds. You. Hundreds. And I love the Coliseum. Oh, no. Yeah. That's as soon as doing. he told me this, yeah, I went and grabbed this game. This is called Gladiator Quest for the Rudus. Coliseum, baby. Coliseum. Love it. So when I saw that, I was like, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Dean. I bluffed you out. What'd you do? What'd you do? Acting like I was done. I was ready to close out. Oh, so you yeah, put the board game put down. Back down. You didn't want to hear more about the quest? <laughs> Pull out the instruction, man. Quest for the Rudus. <laughs> <laughs> it's card based. Jim uh, May, we are going to Ireland and Scotland. First yes. time. First time. May 12th, Sunday, we fly out. Waterford. We That's a Sunday. Uh, going to Waterford Distillery and in Waterford at south of Dublin. All right. South for, of Dublin. Basically for the week. Yeah. Friday morning, we will fly up to Glasgow, mm. Scotland. Uh, we're going to meet up with Roy, Aqua yep. Vitae. And then the, uh, He's going to be our tour guide for the week, yeah. for the next week. We're having a European gathering Saturday. Well, we've got he's we're doing we're getting some stuff lined up for us to do uh, some behind the scenes type stuff. Sure. Saturday. Oh, we're traveling. We'll be yeah, on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday afternoon, though, uh, Roy has organized a tasting. I think that's sold out already. Um, and then Saturday night, we'll be hanging out at the Bon Accord. Like eight people. Whiskey, big whiskey Small bar. Venue. Lots of whiskeys. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. And uh, he said there's been a lot of interest, a lot of people planning on showing up. Beautiful. And coming. That'll be good. So the rest of the week we're going, we're, we've got a full week. Full week. Up. Full week. We're looking uh, forward to it. It'll be my first international trip, so okay. I haven't flown. All right. Uh, the only jet lag I, I've had has only been like, you know, two hours. Sure. East you know Coast, what I'm worried about is now. We, we have daylight savings time. We just spring forward and I'm jacked. So mm -hmm. I'm like, uh-oh. You know, it'll be like it'll be like one thirty p.m. and I'll be like, I it'll can't be like, stay up. Be like, and you'll be like, come on, Austin, come on, yeah, yeah. 
in the Austin heat, I got a little testy. <laughs> he was like, do it. And I'm like, you do it. You do it. Take the hat off. And <laughs> you're like, what's the hat got to do with anything? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I started hitting him. <laughs> we were doing an interview and the fan, who was it? It Was, was it Zach? No. Uh, oh, it was, was it? Um, uh, the fan was there and I'm like. I, was, I think it was Kevin. <laughs> oh, did you get the book? No. His wife was resending the book for us to sign. Yeah, we got to sign it. I haven't seen you haven't it. You have got it? Oh. No. Maybe it's at the P.O. box. All right. Oh. Scotch it. You Scotch guys. It's launching. Dummies. Dummies. <laughs>